Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to morning prayer today from St Thomas's Church in Blackpool. And I've got the bird feeder on today, and my um, my mouse isn't working, and now there's my keyboard. So I <laughs> um, it's all annoying, isn't it? <laughs> technology we love it we hate it um it's my last morning prayer with you today this is my last week my last sunday on sunday and um, before i go off to the and um, where i'll be missing our neighbor so i'm looking forward to that but um we'll be sad to move on from st thomas's um it's been so lovely to pray with you over the last couple of years um, and to share life with you guys. So thank you very much for that. I'm just going to share my screen with you. I'll just make that an odd screen, get rid of all those borders annoyingly. There we are. It's the 12th of July already. How has that happened? <laughs> Crazy. Good morning, David. Nice to have you with us. Let's move on to our prayer then. Let's just still ourselves before we pray today. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image and in these last days you have spoken to us in your son jesus christ the word made flesh as we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us that the light of your love always shine in our hearts your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god forever Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you minister of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm this morning, Psalm 87. His foundation is on the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, Zion, city of our God. I record Egypt and Babylon as those who know me. Behold Philistia, Tyre and Ethiopia. In Zion were they born. And of Zion it shall be said, each one was born in her. And the Most High himself has established her. The Lord will record as he writes up the peoples. This one also was born there. And as they dance they shall sing. All my fresh springs are in you. Our next, Psalm, Psalm 89. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. 
With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. For you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne for all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who among the clouds can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the host of heaven? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible above all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? Mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea. You still its waves when they arise. You crushed Rahab with a deadly wound and scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens. The earth also is yours. You established the world and all that fills it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before your face. Happy are the people who know the shout of triumph. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all the day long and are exalted in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength and in your favour you lift up our heads. Truly, the Lord is our shield. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now our reading follows the story of Samson from Judges chapter 14. Once Samson went down to Timnah, and at Timnah he saw a Philistine woman. Then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw a Philistine woman at Timnah, now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among your kin, or among all our people, that you must go and take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, because she pleases me. His father and mother did not know that this was from the Lord, for he was seeking a pretext to act against the Philistines. At that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Timnah. When he came to the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion roared at him. The spirit of the Lord rushed on him and he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as one might tear apart a kid. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he'd done. Then he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased Samson. After a while he returned to marry her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped it out with his hands and went on eating as he went. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they ate it. But he did not tell them that he'd taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. His father went down to the woman and Samson made a feast there as the young men were accustomed to do. When the people saw him, they brought 30 companions to be with him. Samson said to them, let me now put a riddle to you. If you can explain it to me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 feastal garments. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 linen garments and 30 feastal garments. So they said to him, ask your riddle, let us hear it. He said to them, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. But for three days, they could not explain the riddle. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, coax your husband, to explain the riddle to us, or we will burn you in your father's house with fire. Have you invited us here to impoverish us? So Samson's wife wept before him, saying, You hate me. You do not really love me. You have asked a riddle of my people, but you have not explained it to me. He said to her, Look, I have not told my father or my mother. Why should I tell you? She wept before him for the seven days that their feast lasted, and because she nagged him, on the seventh day he told her, then she explained the riddle to her people. The men of the town said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not ploughed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. 
Then the spirit of the Lord rushed on him, and he went down to Ashkelon. He killed thirty men of the town, took their spoil, and gave the feastal garments to those who had explained the riddle. In hot anger, he went back to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. And our second reading is from Luke chapter 18. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Excuse me. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our... Um, Reflection this morning is written by Guli Francis de Kwani. We've had her before and she's written some really great reflections. Um, and this time she's reflecting on that judge's reading, which I don't know about you, but I find those um, some of those stories in, um, the, in the Old Testament, particularly in, in like judges and um, Samuel, quite difficult to hear. Um, I think that was one of them. So let's hear what um, Guli Francis de Kwani has to say about this reading from Judges 14. She says this. Today we encounter a whole range of emotions and behaviours that reflect the shadow side of human nature. Among them are greed and lust, hubris, trickery, deceit, betrayal, coercion, threats and intimidation. At the core of this episode in Samson's life, what might have been a light-hearted riddle with a bet attached turns into a dark tale with a bitter ending. The story is a reminder that when human passions go unchecked, the results can be disastrous and bleak and the ripple effects can be far-reaching. By the end of our passage, a marriage has ended, 30 men have lost their lives, and all Samson is left with is a wild, all-consuming rage. Each apparently small action we take can have far-reaching consequences. We do well regularly to ask ourselves where our true loyalties lie, what our motivations are, and who are those who can make us help us make wise decisions. So, who are those who accompany you through life, who know you, love you, have your best interests at heart and, crucially, will be honest with you even when it's hard? Who are those you work alongside who might gently warn you when you're going off track, losing sight of the bigger picture or stepping on the toes of others? Take a moment to pray for them and give thanks for them and make sure you make time to listen to them. responsory. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. 
Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. So we turn now to a time of prayer, of intercession, praying for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, and for the church and her life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for today. We thank you for bringing us safely to it, and we thank you for all of the um, the good things that we have already encountered today and we will encounter during the course of the day. We pray for those things that we are anticipating in the day ahead, for the people we'll meet, the tasks we'll do, for our workplaces, for our homes. Would you meet us where we are and may we see you at work around us today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation today, praying especially for Parliament and for the Conservative Party as they begin to elect a new leader that will become our Prime Minister. We pray for all working in and positions of authority, particularly those working in government, they may have lives of integrity and justice, and that they might truly serve the poorest and the most needy in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world, for all the need that there is, for those who are living in difficult circumstances, for all the places of the world where there is famine and flood, and for the places of the world where there is fighting, war and injustice. I pray that you might bring peace where peace is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, praying for the church worldwide, that we might be a people who share your love generously with those we know and meet. May we be a people who proclaim the good news of Jesus and are not ashamed to live lives that are holy lives. We pray for St Thomas's Church here in Blackpool, for all our mission and ministry. we pray for all the people in our parish as well. We pray that you would meet the needs of those who are struggling today, particularly those who are struggling financially, for those who are struggling with their own mental health, for those who are struggling with their family lives. Would you move in power today? Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of England and we pray especially for um, General Synod met meeting this week in York, for the governing body there that make decisions about um, the priorities for the church in this nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us to pray today. Morning as well to Joan and Helen who joined us during the prayer sir. Um, the birds were not very busy today, were they not? They <laughs> put new food out for them, but maybe it's just a bit damp and they're hiding in the bushes, I think. Um, it has been so delightful to pray with you and I pray that you have a blessed day and look after yourselves. And I hope to see you on Sunday um, in the morning or the evening. I'll be there at both services. So you take care and have a good week. Bye now.